3D virtual worlds and the metaverse, current status and future possibilities. And here we are today at the Peninsula College virtual classroom. So we are experiencing a 3D virtual world while we learn about 3D virtual worlds. The next question from a student is, do you believe the metaverse is possible? How could it be created? Who would be an ethical curator for it? That's good. A multi-part question. I absolutely believe a metaverse is possible. I mean, if I didn't, I wouldn't have been in the IEEE Virtual World Standards Group. Um, so the answer is how... And the answer to how it would be created, though, comes down to a single word, interoperability. When everyone begins to work with a cross-platform standard and allows all those systems to talk to each other, other uh, through common APIs and formats, I think that's when you'll see a metaverse arise out of pre-existing technologies as they interconnect. Who would be the ethical curator of that? Well, I think the answer is likely to be nobody. I mean, who's the curator of BitTorrent? I mean, who's in charge of BitTorrent? Nobody. You know, who's in charge of, you know, Bitcoin? You know, those decentralized systems have no ruler. You know, they have you know, they have standards, but nobody's in charge of the whole thing, and, and that's kind of the point. So. In this manner, I believe the metaverse will resemble more like an international space where the individual curators who run the patchwork of simulations and services connected together will treat it like crossing a border to another country. Okay, wow. Um, our next question is, what are some key aspects or key traits to a successful commercial enterprise in the virtual world? It's actually pretty easy. Pretty much the same as a commercial enterprise in the real world, with the exception of understanding the context of interaction and social nuances of a virtual world space. So you'd have to be in here for a while, you know, into a virtual environment to see how those nuances are different. Otherwise, approach it the same way with just those key differences. Uh, and those are key differences you really can't explain unless you're actually in a virtual world long enough. Uh, then you just kind of know it, you intuit it. Okay, can limited use of literary gaming elements potentially make virtual environments more accessible and easier to grasp for newcomers, or would you say they only impede the possibilities of those worlds? Hmm. Well, I actually believe they can make them more accessible, or at least better directed. Uh, for instance, when creating a new virtual environment platform, one must understand that the smallest choices have a domino effect. Second Life, the decision to allow a teleportation, for instance, changed everything about this place. And they didn't realize it in the beginning what that domino effect would uh, come about. So, a good example is uh, the traditional transportation here, or the lack of it. Uh, because of teleportation and the way they designed things, uh, it eliminated the need for highways, intersim, uh, planes, airports, spatial, and spatial reasoning second life went out the window. For instance, we have real no relation in our head right now of where this spot here is in relation to anything else outside of this space. Right? So we don't know who's next door. We never bother to walk over there. Most of the time we don't. So when you go to a nightclub, you have no idea in relation to where it is on the grid. It never, it never occurred to you because you teleport everywhere. So the in-between parts went away. And our spatial reasoning in that went out the door, just out the window. And the reasoning, because we don't have our, uh, because we had the teleportation, a lot of interesting things came out of that, such as a while back, I remember Linden Lab tried early on to do this uh, community. They tried to, to have this uh, suburban neighborhood, you know, so be it, and found out nobody was there. Nobody showed up, and they couldn't figure out why. Nobody stuck around. And the reasoning is, is because there was no need uh, to ha the the reason we form communities like that a lot of the time outside of role play, and I'll get to that in a minute in SL uh, or in anywhere we we build our towns to bring ourselves together. Uh, you know, UI, MO, Zoe, Zinnia, we all have our different strengths and weaknesses. We come together because that makes us uh, it's a necessity in real life, uh, and as a community we end up growing to a point where we have uh, export out or, you know, I make certain things, you, you know, Zinnia makes certain things, and we trade with the next town over 
which then necessitates stuff like roads and transportation. Uh, you know, that's how we have ships and planes and all that. You know, transportation becomes a necessity uh, born out of uh, what we do here, you know, or in the real world. So because we don't have that, that need, we got rid of it through teleportation. That one little simple decision uh, killed off highways, towns, and all nine yards. You know, no, pl no, there's no airports. There's no, you know, we have airports in here, but they're kind of useless. They're just there for looks, you know, for role playing looks. Essentially, same thing with like boating. You don't need to boat. There's nowhere to boat. We have open waters, but we're doing it because it's just something to do. So we don't actually have a necessity to get on a boat and go across the sea. We don't have a necessity to take an international so-called virtual flight. We don't take a train. You know, there's no Amtrak stations around here where we can hop on a train and go cross grid. You know, although I would love to do that myself. You know, I would love to just get on a train and sit there for two hours. Why? Because why not? You know, the journey is half the fun. But <laughs> yes, because of that, because of that teleportation as in incident. All that stuff collapsed. There was no need to do uh, design the grid in Second Life in a manner that would allow ease ease of use for crossing simulations. It never dawned on them because nobody was driving. So when you get a car in here, you know, you'll find out just how hard it is to drive across the mainland. You, as soon as you cross a border on, on a on a sim, your car goes flying everywhere. You know, it's just all jerky and laggy, and that's because it never occurred to them that somebody might want to drive a hundred miles in here. So when you buy a car, what do you do? You'd go into these like special sends to drive around the track. You know, we have race, you know, racing places where people go and race cars, but that's about the extent of it. It's a it's a novelty. And why? Because they invented teleportation. They let you go anywhere you want instantly. So yeah, that's you know one little thing changed the entire situation here in a virtual environment. The same thing as uh, items not having a. Uh, not having a, de a degradation value, you know. Uh, my favorite saying in a virtual world is everything's made of un unobtainium. It's made of cardboard, you know, invincible cardboard. You know, because it is, you know. Your pants don't die, your shirts don't, you know, degrade. You have no reason to, you know, to repair it. And because of that one little uh, issue, that one little thing they decided that everything is invincible, more or less, well, there's no scarcity. And as a re as a you know, we have to invoke artificial scarcity to, to make up for it, but in the same vein, you know, scarcity means nothing really has a major value to it. So it fluctuates based on what you think it's worth, but since there's no scarcity, you know, there's no material scarcity in here, there's no real economy other than uh, uh, artificial economy. So those little things do make a huge difference, you know. So in gaming, we say gaming or literary kind of elements adding to it. Well, Project Entropia has those elements. They have stuff like it takes X amount of, you know, this material to make such and such an item and it costs this much money to get those materials and you know, they have that complex ecosystem going on and as a result their <clears throat> the economy is much stronger. As a result. Uh, items do wear out, you know, you can use a gun or something or some clothes in there for a certain amount of time before you start getting holes in it. And you gotta replace it. So that drives the economy, that scarcity, that need. Same thing with having vehicles. You can't just tele you can teleport at hubs, but for the most part you're on foot and suddenly when you're running across the you know the, the virtual world and it's a big planet, suddenly you, f you see a need to have a vehicle. <laughs> suddenly you suddenly you go, you know, it would be really great if I had a vehicle right about now. And it's the same thing in World of Warcraft, you know, you can't teleport, you know, fast travel sort of deal at hubs. But when you're running across the you know the game it takes you a good half hour. At some point, you start thinking to yourself, "It would be great if I had a horse right about now." <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's how that's how we have these trade routes. That's how these things, you know, roads and all this stuff arise when you make that one little change. So the domino effect, it's you know, massively important. Knowing like being able to sit down in the beginning and say, "If I took away this, or what if I said teleportation had an energy meter? You know, everything you did required energy." In some sort, and doing these things, you know, would suck that energy out, like based on distance or something. I can only teleport X amount of, you know, miles or something virtually, or you know, X amount of time a day before I got to start using, you know, before I'm depleted for whatever reason. Maybe I'm wearing a little, you know, digital device, you know, virtual watch or something that says, hey, I'm out of energy. 
know, you could either buy it with more lindens, <laughs> buy more energy with lindens and another battery or something, or just take the damn train. You know, and that's would balance it out nicely. So yeah, I actually believe they can make it more accessible uh, because to a new user, a lot of what's missing in here are things that we take for granted in real life. You know, the way we do things. You know, how do I get from point A to point B? Teleport. That's not a normal thing. <clears throat> but if you had trains running around, if you had like trams or something taking people around, if you had your, you know, your airports and stuff, that becomes more accessible to new users. You say, "Oh, I can take a, a plane." flight or something and they would you know get more spatial reasoning out of it they would remember things better they would put it together faster so i think yeah that would definitely help 